we started the school year fully remote. So as you know, I mean, with COVID and the, the concerns around that, we've taken a very cautious approach um, to coming back to school. We spent the, the first semester in a remote learning uh, atmosphere. And then we came back January 26th, the start of second semester for an in-person hybrid. So we actually have an AM and a PM cohort. Uh, students come four days a week, uh, half a day, either in the morning or the afternoon. Uh, and as we were planning for that, um, we knew that uh, music and theater is a big part of what we do. It's a big part of our students' lives. And we wanted to make sure that students had the opportunity to continue to do that work in groups uh, here at the high school when we came back. So, um, I mean, I can share it's our, uh, our teachers who came up with this. It's our music and our theater teachers who, who kind of looked at the regulations and said, okay, this is gonna be a challenge for us. What if we looked at something creative? And uh, that was a fantastic way to kind of solve this problem. And then we uh, collaborated with our local health district and uh, they gave the, uh, the, the sign off on that. And we've been doing this for five weeks and kids are able to, to work together in teams to, to play together. I tell you what, I'm gonna ask if you can describe the scene behind you to someone who would be blind well, <laughs> so the scene behind me is we are currently in uh, the Wenatchee High School Auditorium. We've got students in our, they are a tent that's been modified. So when you kind of think about, uh, we've got a tent, like a changing tent for camping and whatnot. And we've modified those to create uh, a clear uh, visible uh, screen in front um, so that students can see through that. And then we've got our students inside those tents with their their instruments and that is where uh, they play during uh, the time that they have music. When you first saw them in the tents, collective as they are now, what was your reaction? Well, I mean, let, let's be honest, everybody looks at it and thinks this is a little funny. I mean, this doesn't look like your norm, um, but when it comes to creativity, sometimes that's just the way it goes. Something that maybe maybe looks a little bit funny is, uh, is highly effective for us. So that has been the case in this scenario as well. When you talk about some of your staffers who you, you say came up with this idea, <laughs> um, uh, where did they come up with this? Did, they, did this brainstorm you know, appear in their heads or have they seen this elsewhere or maybe you're not sure? I think this was kind of in collaboration with our local theater department in the community in Wenatchee. They were kind of talking about how to how to make this work. And I think it kind of came through those, uh, those dialogues that uh, they started to look at this. And then again, this is, they're inexpensive. So it's not like it was a major investment for us to, to kind of dive in and try a couple things before we brought students back and make sure that, uh, that again, this was kind of the safest way to go. When you talk about investment, here they are, it may look a little silly depending on who looks at it. They're still together. Correct. Yep. Talk yeah, about why that's an investment. Yeah, I mean, they're still spread out by six feet, but when you take a look at the fact that we've got a number of students able to play together, and we have a large music program. I mean, we have a very large marching band. We've got a, a mariachi program. We've got a fantastic choir program. We've, all of this stuff is going, we did not want to give that up. It was really important for us to find a solution to that, for them to play together and not just play remotely. That was the other side of that. Like this. Right, exactly, across Zoom, you got it. This gets pretty old, doesn't it? Well, yeah, I'm not gonna comment on that. Yes, it does, <laughs> it does, yes. Yeah, we, you know, we obviously crave human interaction. Our students are, are super excited to be back in our building. Our staff is probably just as excited, not probably, I know they're just as excited to have kids back in this building. And again, we took a lot of steps to make sure everybody was safe, and this is one of those steps. Um, but again, we've been doing this for five weeks, and. We've got some great mitigation strategies as students come into this building and we've been, uh, our kids have really been enjoying the opportunity to play together as a group. Yeah, uh, it, certainly an answer perhaps for this use, but not one size fits all. It's not like you can outfit your football players <laughs> in, in tents, right? Can you talk about limitations so far? Yeah, I mean, obviously, these have worked for our music program, um, but not something we've been able to, to adapt elsewhere. I mean, we are not putting these in every classroom, so I don't want anybody to think out there that this is the solution to having more kids in a classroom, um, because that, I, I don't think that would work. But in this scenario, it's worked really well. Where's your tent? Where's my tent? 
Well, I, I could get in one, um, but I, I will tell you, 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 you do not want to hear me play an instrument. I will tell you that much right now. I love music, but I cannot play an instrument. <laughs> Nor do you want to hear me sing. I will say that as well. <laughs> well, that was my next question. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, are you able to identify uh, numerically how many how many families decided to not return in person since this starts? Uh, well, at the high school level, we have we have a couple opportunities for students. Obviously, we have a running start program um, that students can choose, which is through our, our local community college. Um, we do have about 200 students that are connected to our Running Start program. We also have what's called our Wenatchee Internet Academy. So that's a 9-12 program allowing students to remain completely online. Uh, we've got about 140 students that are currently in the 9-12 grade range that are in that program. Um, and then everybody else is back here in the building. So our, our cohorts, the way they break down, we have about 900 students that come in the morning and then close to 900 students that come in the afternoon. So all things said, it sounds similar to what, 2018, 19? Uh, no, it's not. I wouldn't say it's similar to 2018, 19 in terms of- I meant, I'm sorry, I meant in, in, in population, like size of the, the student body. Yeah, we're, we're close to around 2,000 students, a little over 2,000 students in total enrollment for our 912 uh, here at the high school. So yeah, we're, the enrollment itself is about the same. We're just spread out a little bit more. Um, Holy smoke! Uh, you're it, 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 you've got a, you've got a, you, you're describing it in, in in really positive terms because why? Help explain to our viewers why you might view this as a real positive step. Well, I mean, when you think about this school year, I mean this this year, it's been a challenge in education. There's no question about that. I mean, we have taken one approach at a time to try and get kids back into this building. Um, and I would think across the state, I think those same conversations are happening. I mean, it is to make sure everybody is safe, both the students and the adults. It's a lot of work. I mean, it's a whole lot of planning. Um, and there's things that we, you know, you can't always plan for. But when it comes together and we're able to get students back into this building and they're able to interact with each other, it's made a huge difference. It's made a huge difference, I think, on the social, social emotional well-being of our students, the social emotional well-being of our staff the engagement level of our students, um, being back in this building four days a week, days a week has been incredible for everybody. Because school without your, the, the, the fellow sitting next door right there isn't really school, is it? It's, it school from home isn't, doesn't feel the same. No, it doesn't. And I, and I will say, even bringing students back, it was really interesting, um, especially early on. Students are very quiet. I mean, it was really interesting when they came back into the building, how quiet they were in the hallways, in the classroom. Um, and the longer we're doing this, the more they're kind of branching out and, and getting a little bit louder and, and connecting with each other. But uh, again, we've been doing this for five weeks. So there's others around us that have been doing this for longer, but we are excited about where we're at right now. Uh, I've just got one more question. And after that, uh, I understand you might be playing us out <laughs> That's right. Yep. We're going to have the Golden Apple Band give you a little song here. The, uh, the last question for you was, I'm not sure I have any more questions for you. Is there something else you'd like to talk about we haven't had a chance to talk about on the record yet? Uh, no, I don't think so. I just think that I, I really appreciate the way our school district has approached this. I think the methodical nature of being safe, but really being in collaboration with our health district. I think that uh, they've done a great job of, of working slowly and methodically back to we have students in our building and we are obviously extremely hopeful that next fall we're back full time with all of our kids every day. So, yeah, that's where we're at. I don't want to say it, but play me out. <laughs> all right. Well, this is the Golden Apple Band from Wenatchee High School playing the Land of a Thousand Dances. Take over.
smoke. <laughs> I, I feel <laughs> I'm so privileged, right? Thank you for the show. Well done, everyone.